Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Happy Sabbath. You guys have no idea how privileged I feel to be here this morning. Especially because about two years ago, I saw this church being created. And just to come back and see how big it is right now, it, I just feel blessed. You know, while I was here, I was having a very good life, just like Mr. Friday was saying. I, I was in school and I was doing well. I was also on a good job and I was doing fine on that shit. But for some reason, what I was doing wasn't what God wanted me to do. So he took me out of here. He put me in a different state. He put me in a different school in a brand new major. And thanks God, because I've never been so happy in my life. Amen. And today I want to show you something that really touched my life. And that thing was, God helped me never to give up. Because many times in, in my journey, I thought about giving up. I thought that, you know, the only answer for my problems was just to give up on Him. But He showed me not to give up. And that's what I'm going to show you guys today. Let's pray real quick to invite the Holy Spirit to come with us. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for this morning. Thank you so much for the church. Please, Lord, I want to invite you to be with me. And don't let me speak anything, but speak through me. That's why I ask you name, amen. Well, I was looking through the Bible, trying to find people that never gave up. It's quite funny because there's a lot of people that never gave up in the Bible. First of all, I found Noah. Noah had to build a boat in the middle of the desert for 120 years. He prayed, saying that the flood would come. People called him crazy. People called him insane. But still, he never gave up. Noah. I know that some of us here, sometimes we get yelled or some, some, someone says something bad to you and you cannot stand for even a minute. Now think about it, Noah stood for 120 years and he never gave up. Now we find, we find also Abraham. Abraham, God told him to get his only son and kill him as a sacrifice. That's that I doubt that many of us here would be able to do. We still, he never gave up on God. He kept, he kept, you know, he was going to do it. I also found Joseph. Joseph was very interesting because he was betrayed by his brothers. He went to, as a slave to Egypt. He, he went to prison and he was in prison for a long time. But still he never gave up. He never gave up. We also find um, Moses. <laughs> Moses is a special case. I mean, if you look at uh, how many of us here have been to uh, family reunions, right? And sometimes we have 50, 60, maybe 100 people, and we cannot stand them for one, one weekend. <laughs> now Moses was in the desert for 40 years with about a million people, and he never gave up. He did complain sometimes, but never gave up. You see, we could talk about people that never gave up for, for the whole day, because the Bible is filled with people that never gave up. But there's one person in the Bible that sticks out most. And the person is Jesus. Jesus was also very interesting. If you look at it, Jesus was born in Bethlehem. And even before he could give his first step, people were trying to kill him already. People were persecuting him. Even before he could say his first word, people were already trying to shut him up. But still, he never gave up. And I can imagine Jesus growing up as a kid. And he was tempted just like, just like we are today. And he never gave up. In fact, he won temptation. Also, when he was on his ministry, Jesus was hated. Jesus was, people beat him up, tried to beat him up, tried to kill him. But he still never gave up. He never gave up. And it's very interesting, you know, all those people in the Bible, they never gave up. And Jesus is our biggest example of someone that never gave up. But what does exactly giving up means? The dictionary says that giving up, um, according to the dictionary, is to surrender, is to lose hope, and to stop trying. And as humans, I mean, we tend to give up, right? And why do we give up? We give up when things are not the way we want. It's easier to give up than to, to keep doing whatever we're doing. And sometimes, if we talk about giving up on God, we give up on God because 
it's not easy to follow God, right? People might mock us. People might fire us from our jobs. They might even try to hurt you. you know, but we can't give up on God. And that's what I'm here to tell you today. That sometimes we give up on God because we forget to look up and look at Him. There's a little story about a swimmer. That she was trying to cross the Atlantic Ocean. And if she'd done so, she would be the first female swimmer to do so, which was a very hard, you know, task to do to cross the planet. So she, when she started, and she was very motivated, but getting close to the end, she was getting very frustrated because it seemed that it would never end. But finally, she did it. She made it through. And at the end, she when she when she got to the shore, she had a big party, and. Um, People just were like partying with her and having a feast for her. And she gave an interview on a, on a TV station. And a reporter asked her, <coughs> why didn't she give up? And she said that every time she was thinking about giving up, she would take his hat, her hat off the water and look up and see the lights of the finish line. And every time she would see the lights of the finish line, she wouldn't give up because she knew she was getting close. My friends, some of us here today, we might give up because we forget to look up and see the lights of Jesus. Amen. And I know for sure that Jesus is so close that we can actually see his lights. We can actually see Jesus' lights. But what I want to give you today is biblical reasons why we should not give up. Why we should not give up. And let's open our Bibles to Philippians 1, verse 3, and go all the way through 5. And to fully understand why Paul was writing what he wrote to the Philippians. We have to understand what, what the, the church of Philippi was passing through. Now, this is a church that's it's a brand new church. And in Philippi, they were having a lot of idolatry. They're having a lot of uh, alcohol, prostitution. And those things were common those days. And I'm pretty sure that some of the people that started the church, they were involved in some of those things. You know? And it's very hard for them just to all of a sudden find a man called Jesus. They heard this message. And for some reason, Jesus would not let them go. They would keep thinking about it. And they knew that once they start to follow this person, they would start following Jesus. They would lose their status. They would lose the power in society. But still, they, didn't want, they did not want to give up. I'm sorry. They did not want to give up. So Paul, looking at the situation, he writes to them. And notice that Paul was writing from a prison as well. You know, he wasn't in the best shape ever. Let's read uh, Philippians 1, 3 to 5. I thank my God every day I remember you. In all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy because of the partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. Now, that, that's the first reason why we should not give up. Because there's someone praying for you. The power of prayer is very, very important. It's not only good for you, but it's good for the other person as well. It's good for both sides. You know, and come to the point, I ask to you as a church, what are we praying for? Are we praying for our own selfish reasons? Or are we praying for our brothers? They're sitting right beside us. Are we praying for their needs as well? No, no, but I'm not saying that. It's not, it's bad for you to pray for yourself because it's good. It strengthens your relationship with God. But we should take time as well to, to separate to, so we can pray for the others, pray for somebody else's needs. That one day, George Miller, he began to pray for five friends. They were not, you know, in Christ or anything like this. Uh, Ten years later, Few of the friends came to the Lord. Ten years after prayer, they came to the Lord. A few months after that, the third one came to the Lord. It took 25 years more so the, so the fourth one could come to the Lord. And then he kept praying for the fifth one. He wanted the fifth one to come to the Lord. And 52 years later, he, after praying for 50 years, he, did, he passed away. But his faith was rewarded because a few months after his funeral, the fifth one came to Christ. You know, George Miller, he never gave up on those friends. He was praying for them all the time because he believed in the power of a prayer for somebody else. And that's we. 
as church, that's what we should do. Pray for somebody else. And that's why we don't we should not give up. Because there's always gonna be somebody praying for you as well. Now let's go back to Philippians and read verse six, just the first part of it. And he starts being confident of this that he who began a good work in you. Now let's stop right there. Did I read it right? I mean, did God start a, a work in me? Yes, it did. And he not only started working you and in me, but he started good work. You like this? He started good work in you and in me. That makes it, that makes it special, you know? Sometimes we, we like to look at people around us and try to compare our life to everybody else. And we see our friends getting a new car. We see our, our brothers getting a new job. They get paid more. And we look and say, God, why, did, why didn't you do something like this in my life? You know, why don't you do something that in my life? But I can tell you, my friends, God has started something good in you. He has started something good in you. So next time, next time you think about your friend's car, think about how God saved you from the, from the car wreck that you just had. Whenever you think about the job of your friends, think about how God provided whenever you didn't have enough. He will always provide because he did start something good in you. You know, have you guys ever, ever heard about origami? For those who don't know, origami is the art of making things with paper. And I always, I always like this. I just saw some origami on the floor right there. <laughs> and I was thinking about it. And I'm, I always tried to do so, but I was never that good. Because sometimes I'll get a piece of paper, I was like, I want to do a boat. Well, it we won't look like a goose <laughs> or a ball, you know? I've never been good at it. But even though I had the willing, I wanted to do something I could not do. But now we got it. We're talking here about the king of the universe. He started something good in me. And he knows what he's doing. He knows what he's doing. And that brings us to the third point. Let's read back on, on verse 6, the last part. We will carry it to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Now, how many of us here have something unfinished at home? Let's see your hands. Yeah. <laughs> In fact, I brought stuff to do from, from school on spring break, which I haven't done yet, folks. But I'll finish it soon. <laughs> Well, we all have things to do. We all have things that we might not even finish. But now we got it. Now we got it. Because whatever God started, He will finish. He will finish in you. Now, God will carry it to completion. And we're not talking about any completion here. We're talking about 150% five-year warranty of completion. You're not only complete, but you'll make sure it's perfect until the days of Christ Jesus. Sometimes you might be asking yourself, you know, God didn't start anything on me. He did. He just is not finished yet. But whenever the crisis comes, He will be finishing it. Now this year, I took two positions on an SA student association of my school. I'm part of the publications, and I'm also uh, one of the social vice presidents. It's been pretty tough, you know, to juggle everything. But uh, one of the things that as a as, um, social vice president, I have to do, I have to design and uh, organize a big banquet called Mimosa. And it was really tough because one of the things I had to do was to design a ticket so people can buy and go to the, to the Mimosa. And I told, I told myself, I'm going to start a long time before. I'm not going to put it on the back burner. I'm going to finish it with time to spare. Well, time passed by and uh, nothing. 12 hours before, nothing. You all know what I was suffering, right? You guys heard of uh, procrastination? I like to call it living in the edge, you know? I just like to live in the edge. And to, to fix my problem of living in the edge, I had to go to Kinko's very late at night and print them out. And six hours later, I was done. With just a few minutes to spare, but I was done. I, it wasn't the way I wanted, but, you know, it was something. It was something, but, and thank God, you know, I finished it. But with God, it's a little different. Because you are God's best project, the most important project. And He'll never put you on the back burner. He'll never put you, uh, He'll never procrastinate with you. Because He has His own time. 
Even though sometimes you want to do things quicker, he said, you'll be done. You carry to completion to the days of Christ Jesus. And as far as I know, Christ hasn't come back yet. <laughs> so he's still working on you. Now, that's the third point why we should not give up. Because whatever God starts in you, he will finish in you. Now let's read one more time the whole thing again. I thank God every time I remember you in all my prayers for all of you. I always pray with joy because of the partnership in the gospel. From the first day until now, I'm confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry to completion until the days of Christ Jesus. So my friends, don't give up because there's someone praying for you. Don't give up because God started something good in you. And don't give up because whatever He started in you, He still needs to finish. Now I know that some of us here might be feeling like giving up. Some of us here might be, might be feeling like God is not no longer with us. So why should we keep with them? Let's just give up. Well, my friends, God wants to do this work in you, but the first step is for you to accept it. To accept that we can, we can finish what He started. Some of us here might be thinking, well, God started something good in me, but I don't think He's going to finish. Well, my friends, I'm here to tell you that He will finish. He will finish until the day of Christ Jesus. He, had, he gave you even a time. He gave you a timeline for you to follow. As Jesus lived in this earth, he never gave up. As he was sitting with his disciples on the table on the Passover, partaking from the first communion, he could see his future, he could see his death, and he never gave up. As he was being judged, and he was being hit on the face and spit on the face, he never gave up. As he was walking through the, through the city with the big cross in his back, and he was good, and as he could feel the blood coming out of his face, he remembered you, and he never gave up because of you. As he was, as he was, as he was being nailed to the cross, and as he was feeling the nails piercing through his hands, he looked in the future and he said, I started something, and I need to finish. So he never gave up. Jesus is our biggest example of how not to give up. The same God that suffered for you and me in the cross is the God that tells you He will be with you and He will complete what He started. So don't give up. I know, I know that a lot of people here might be, might be feeling like giving up. And for those people, I just want to say that the only way for you not to give up is for you to turn your, your life into God. And the only way to do so is on your knees. You're not gonna you're not gonna you're not gonna turn your life to God by only saying I want you to do it. Of course you have to acknowledge it, but please go to your knees and pray. So God will finish what He started in you. Many of us here might have some stories that whenever we were kids or whenever we were born we had something Something about life and death situation that God brought us outside. And I can say that whenever that happened, that was God working in you. And He would keep working until the days of completion. And if you feel like this, if you feel like giving up, and today you want to recommit your, your life to God and tell Him, Lord, I don't want to give up. Help me not to give up. If you want to, if you want to recommit your life and say, Lord, I feel like you started something good in me, but I cannot see it. But I just want to trust my life in you and just put in cruise control and just keep going and let you live my life. I don't want you to stand up. I don't want you to come to the front. I want you to do like I did when I had a sermon with the same topic about don't give up. I just want you to stay in your seat. And I just want you to think about it. Because I, I believe that the change starts from within. Whenever the pastor gave the appeal to me on that day, I never stood up. But only God knows the change that was made in my life that day. So I want you to pray with you this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much because we have the assurance that you started something in us. And you not only started something in the Lord, but you started something good in us. 
and you also complete it. Lord, I want to pray for this uh, church family here, that they may get closer together, Lord, that they may pray for each other, that they may, may be the answer for somebody's prayer, Lord, because we know that a lot of people here might not give up because of their prayers. Lord, be with us throughout the Sabbath. Give us wisdom and give us your Holy Spirit. That's what I ask in your name, amen. May the Lord be with you today, tomorrow, and forever. That's my prayer. Amen. Amen.